trying to down because this is a dog that has been on training tools and his owner working really hard through reactivity for over a year and a half. So he's trying to offer obedience because probably because it's challenging me of this large and powerful the dog reacting. So she's probably down, down, down using obedience. Exactly, using obedience to work through state of mind, which isn't at the end of the day going to get us to what this dog needs, which is cut the arousal. I'm at an eight. Slow the brain, the body will follow. Good. Good. Moving really slow with him, a short leash. Because again, this is not a dog that doesn't know obedience. My body language is going to be so important to him. And that intensity, good, needs to be ripped. I'm going back and forth between tone and stem. When I turn, stem, right there, stem. Or, I'm sorry, when I turn, it's tone. When I'm snapping, it's stem. It's Frank, he's a newbie, it's okay. Good. Good. So if you hear whining in the background, it's our other newbie just got here. We're not worried about that right now. Good. Good. Good.
behavior of him biting and tugging at the leash would get him in trouble from a standpoint of like that arousal could get a redirection on my leg it could mean that this powerful strong big dog gets the leash out of my hand and he goes and goes at another dog even though it's like he's playful and he's goofing around he's human friendly unacceptable but it was just where his state of mind was the only thing i've done differently right now is i did not correct him for pulling or dragging at the leash i started working on addressing that state of mind getting him to this follow and look at the difference where yes he's panting it's warm it's like 72 degrees out yes his ears are back which some people might look at that as like he's stressed the way that i see it and i feel it because i'm here experiencing it is his state of mind is coming down that's the goal this intensity ears up people see that and think of that as just like just the happiest dog and great state of mind it's not reality especially not for this dog again i can't say it based on every video i see and photo i see because that would be unrealistic but i'll have some people be like why are the dog's ears back because he was in a much calmer state of mind is he, he going to go through moments of feeling a little bit of stress yes because he's so reactive right now that he's constantly in an aroused state and constantly in a stress state as it is so learning curves are going to cause him to feel some stressors, uh, but that doesn't mean it's unhealthy for him. We want to help him get a healthier state of mind, and that's going to mean going through some stressful moments, but stress isn't always a bad thing. Too much stress is a bad thing, of course, but we all grow and learn through some stressful moments, and the goal is to get less stressed overall.
to adjust for arousal in here again. Right. Being strategic about men. Right there, he lost all focus on me. No more prioritizing me. That's not what we're looking for. Bruno. Good. Good response. Just tone there. Great. Again, stay one. Not looking for perfection by any means. You don't go up to other dogs' crates. That's the boundary I'm setting right now. Go to Soka. That's my good girl. Good. Boundary without verbals. I gave a little shush, tap, body language back to me. Dogs are freaking smart people. Like, he's like, cool. Made sense. Very clear that we now understand, let's not go up to other dogs' crates, because that's rude, and that's putting very unfair pressure to other dogs. But I didn't have to be like, no, 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 buddy, get away from there. It's just tap a pressure source that makes sense to him and creates a really clear boundary in a very fair way. At the end of the day, I'm always thinking when I'm working with any dog, how can I do this in the clearest, fairest, and most concise way? And what I mean by that is like, take all of the words and extra high value treats and everything extra out of it and let's communicate in a way that a dog really understands and this is what we get. Very good. Zero obedience. He is in a much better state just right here, right now, without even getting one obedience command. It was just agreeing and disagreeing and giving information through movement to help this dude make better decisions. So let's get back to the crate and see what kind of conversations we need to have from there. So just going to go ahead and see if that creates anything next to you, bud. I think a really good boundary setting on it. Go. Good. Right there. Good boy. What I was doing when you heard shush, tap, shush, tap, shush, tap, I went up a little bit each time because I want to disagree with that intensity towards another dog. Bruno, great. That's good. That's good. That's good. He's a, a daycare dog, so a lot of his arousal, even if he does really well at daycare, is probably coming from a combo of that because off-leash means I play with other dogs. So when on-leash, he's used to his state of mind being around other dogs playing play and his owner said he's a rough player so then you're trying to like hold that back on the leash and you're getting some intensity and it looks pretty serious and it sounds pretty serious um, because it is it is serious so we always need to make sure that that's kept into consideration here is like he might be able to do great with other dogs but the intensity initially and on leash is not serving his state of mind by any means or it's not beneficial for its owner either. All right, Bubba. Bring up. Just tone, 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 tone. Good. Again, this is a dog that's kennel trained. Very good. He didn't even go to like intensify at Ahsoka at all. Beautiful. Break. That's my boy, Brune. That's my boy. Super light leash. I'm letting him kind of make some decisions here. A little bit of arousal in. Shh. We don't go forward at dog's traits. Not fair. Good. Yeah. Good. Good, bro. Great. Good. Good. Yeah. dog that doesn't know obedience. So there, I went back to the crate. He offered me a sit. That's great. Okay, fine. 
waited for the eye contact before giving the next direction. Same with when he went into the crate. I let him know good when he went in, but then I didn't mark the next behavior. He laid right down and didn't ask him for any of that. His owner's done a great job teaching him that, but I waited for this. Again, he's human friendly. Him jumping up on his owner, that's what built up his arousal to then tugging on the leash in way too much intensity. So I shushed in spatial pressure. I didn't use the stim at all. I'm gonna give him a tension infection, but I want to create that boundary a little bit quicker with him on it because it spikes his arousal. Where for instance, on day one with Ahsoka, she was jumping up on me. She's a little bit more insecure with her reactivity and all of her intentions. So I didn't really disagree with her jumping up on me just yet. Um, and hers, it's basically just gone away now. With him, I know it's going to bring the wrong state of mind into the equation. Shh. Good. Shh. Good. There's my good boy. The second or shh. Right here, I'm using a low step. Good. Shh. When you've got do a dominant dog, not that he's like a massively like dominant aggressive dog or anything like that, but like that very forward head into my lady region, no. that's not respectful. Um, that really pushy into me, also not the greatest uh, state of mind for him when we know what it leads to. So again, every dog is different. So you might watch a video where I talk about allowing it immediately with some dogs um, where others not going to allow it with him not right now you've got to really earn that type of wrestling rough play with me it'll come because great i love it love that kind of energy with the dog but not not when it's gonna get him to a, a naughty state so shush this is all state of mind stuff i don't care what position he's in he's in this adorable frog position And I can go a little bit further with him right off the bat because, again, his owner has been doing tons of e-collar work, um, has been doing tons of obedience stuff. So I can, I can really get going with him pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do um, is now that we've had a really nice first session, we're going to stay down here and work with some other dogs. I'm going to keep his e-collar on and his slip lead on and just give him more slack with it. But in case I need to like take him out and do some quick work, I like to keep the dogs for the first little bit on all of their tools so that I can go and work with them appropriately if needed when I'm working with other dogs. But great first session with Bruno. The goal was getting that arousal to a better state because it was way too much. Like would have set the entire tone of the kennel room off and we can't have that. So great first session, Bubba. Got a lot of work to do with him. Um, Arouse is gonna be continuously his thing that we struggle with, but that's why he's here, and we'll keep you guys posted. Stay tuned. 